How do you people even sit so calmly in your seats? Don't you know there's a super volcano in Yellowstone just waiting to blow your faces off and plunge the world into eternal winter? I mean the caldera underneath the Yellowstone Plateau. It's comparable to the Bruno Jabbers caldera, and we all know how that turned out. But that's nothing compared to gamma ray bursts, the laser death rays of the universe. These binary star mergers releasing energy on the order of one two thousandth the rest mass energy of the sun will cook your face off at three times ten to the eight meters per second. <laughs> oh, and don't even get me started on the non-commutativity of quantum var random variables. Without a quantum analogy to the classical notion of a sample space, there's no proof reality exists at all. I'm sure most of you had no idea of your impending doom, existential or physical, and was so close. However, I'm sure most of you still don't, because I was entirely gibberish. <laughs> Accurate but gibberish. I love science and all the mind-boggling mysteries that come with it. But what I'm even more passionate about is sharing my love with others in a way that they can understand. My hope is to make someone else see this wonderful world through the fantastical lens of physics that I have come to know. Perhaps the maniacs who stand in Times Square <coughs> and shout, the end is near, are really just cosmologists trying to inform you of dark energy ripping apart our galaxy, but just don't have the words to say it. <laughs> That's why I admire people like Bill Nye, Hank Green, and Neil deGrasse Tyson. They can make the public understand such difficult topics and share science literacy with everyone. So without further ado, here is, what the hell did I just say? <laughs> a time restricted, budget restricted, quite jank presentation of the coolest ways we'll all be destroyed. <laughs> you pay for your whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. <laughs> Starting with the Yellowstone Volcano, an actual threat with serious consequences on the world's population. Good stuff. However, despite this danger, it is hardly, if at all, related to physics and astronomy. <coughs> Therefore, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Next were those laser death rays from space. They're just peachy. They're called gamma ray bursts, so I guess I'll start with gamma rays. A gamma ray is a type of light, just like the stuff that comes out of bulbs and allows you to see. And it's made of photons, the little packets of energy light comes in. However, if getting hit by a photon of light you can see was like getting punched in the face by one person, getting hit by a gamma ray would be like being punched by everyone living in Manhattan at once. <laughs> These guys mean business, and light so powerful only comes from the biggest kabangs in the universe. Either you smash two dead stars together, or you let a really big one die. Then, instead of all the energy being re released out in a sphere, the magnetic field can funnel it out into two jets, and that's how you get these laser beams of death. But Daniel, you might be saying. I know you keep saying laser beams of death, but what would really happen if we got hit by one? Wouldn't it just be a cool light show? Great question, you. But unfortunately, the answer is yes. If we were hit and you somehow weren't cooked into cosmic bacon, you would see the northern lights all day, every day, for the end of your short, miserable life. But that's only because our atmosphere would be cooked too. And nothing would block the sun's harmful radiation, so you would, so you would die by mega sunburn. <laughs> all in all, there's no need to worry, since gamma ray bursts travel at the speed of light, meaning there is no way to see them before they come and hit. <laughs> and there's nothing we could do about it anyway. Aren't you glad you know that now? <laughs> Finally, I come to... Uh, ah! Well, it is simply... Uh, <clears throat> what did I even say before? Ah, non-communitivity of quantum random variables. Fun to say, but kind of freaky. Without going into too much math, one can show that if you have two probabilities, say the odds of flipping a coin or grabbing a certain color marble, and you can multiply them in any order, then the probabilities must come from a list called the sample space. In the case of a coin, the sample space is heads and tails, or with marbles, it could be red, green, blue, and yellow. Perhaps if, you were picking, perhaps if you were picking a color, the sample space is the color wheel. The funny thing is, in quantum mechanics, or the physics of really small things, probabilities don't flip back and forth in multiplication. This is called non-commutativity, or not commuting. Which also means there's no sample space. Now when we haven't discovered, there isn't one. I know I may have strayed past what you can learn in a senior speech, but just let that sink in. That's like if you went out into a field and saw a bunch of people working. Maybe a CEO, a secretary, and a mailman. You can look at everything they're doing, but if you ask what company they work for, they tell you there is no company. They have plenty of work to do, but no company. 
Or it's like looking at a bunch of colors, but there's no such thing as a color wheel. Kind of freaky, right? <laughs> and as far as we know, that's how everything looks if you look hard enough. Just stuff popping up out of nowhere. Which makes us to question whether reality really exists. When we look at quantum stuff, what are we even looking at? So why wait to ask that girl out? Reality doesn't exist anyway. What do you have to lose? <laughs> for those of you who have made it with me this far, thanks for listening. But I hope you can start to see why I love learning about this stuff so much. The universe could have been very annoying and made everything work in a predictable, simple way that we could understand easily. But it didn't, and it made everything cool and mysterious, thus giving us stars and protons and cells to look at. I just hope that people don't get bogged down by all the math and old mustachioed men that come along with science and can appreciate it for what it really is. Just trying to look at and understand the wonderful world around us. Enjoy your constant but unlikely impending doom. And thank you. <laughs>